In this problem, we want to find the magnitude and the direction of the electric field at point P due to the two point charges and shown in the figure. Okay, so we have these two charges. One of them you might notice is negative, the other one doesn't say, so it's positive. We want to figure out what's the electric field at, these, at this point. So, start by drawing our electric field vectors. This is a negative charge. So you, what you want to ask yourself is at this point, which direction would a positive charge go? Well, from this negative charge, it's going to be attracted. From this positive charge, it would be repelled. So if I draw that over here, my electric field is going to be the addition of the electric field going up from the positive charge and down on an angle from the negative charge. So let me call this charge A and charge B. So this would be the electric field from A and the electric field from B. Okay, now we recognize that in this problem we have to add our two vectors. Now vectors, this vector is in the y direction, but this vector is in a combination of both the x direction, the x direction, and the y direction. So we're eventually going to have to find those two components. But before we do, we have to find the length of these vectors. What is the strength of the electric field? We have an equation. Electric field is k times the charge divided by the distance squared. So let's start with the electric field caused from A this vector. So we need to look. K is going to be our constant. Q is our charge. And the distance between these two, hmm, we don't know the distance between these two right now. But maybe we can use our triangle to figure out what the distance would be. So, if I have a triangle, and this is off to the side, if I have a triangle and its hypotenuse is 20 centimeters, this is a right angle, and I know one of the angles, I can find out what this side length is. So if this is my angle, this would be my opposite side, this is my hypotenuse side. So I'd want to use so sine to figure out what, what the opposite length is. So sine of 60 degrees is my opposite side all over 20 centimeters. So my opposite side is equal to 20 sine 60 degrees. Put that in your calculator, you get Seventeen point three. So that is going to be my distance between charge A and my point that I'm looking at. So when I'm using my electric field formula, I'm going to use this as my distance. Now, just like in Coulomb's law, charge is measured in coulombs. Notice here we have coulombs. And distance should be measured in meters. Maybe I'll put a note here. So what do we have? 17.3 centimeters is 0 0.173 meters. We put this in our calculator and you get 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3, 5. Let's do the same thing. So what we just found was we found the length of this vector. Now let's do the same thing with EB. EB is equal to, well, K is a constant. This doesn't change. It's the same constant used in Coulomb's law. 
3, just like in Coulomb's law, we want to use the absolute values. The reason being is the negative isn't going to tell us anything. All it tells us is the direction. If it was positive, the arrow would be up in this direction. If it's negative, it's down in this direction. Because you ask yourself, where would a positive charge go? It's attracted to a negative charge, so it's going to be down towards it. But we have 3 times 10 to the power of negative 7 for the charge. And the distance between them, well, we know this one. Remember to convert to meters. We put this in our calculator. And you get 6.75 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay, now we know what the length of our two vectors. The next step is... Well, if we want to add these two vectors, because they're in different directions, we've got to split them up into its, their x and y parts. Now, this vector is already in its y, is, is already in the y direction. But this vector right here has both a y and an x component. So let's figure out what those y and x components are. Now, if we look, if this is 90, this is 60, this angle right here, has to be 30. Why is that? 30 plus 60 gives me 90. Add another 90, I have 180. All my angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So, if this is 30 degrees, and we just found this length right here to be 6.75 times 10 to the 4, Let's find what our two components are. So let me redraw this so it's a little bit easier for us to see. So the length of this vector right here is 6.75. That's what we found this to be. 6.75 times 10 to the power of 4. This angle is 30 degrees and I want to find the y component and the x component so you need to use so yeah. so I'll show it I'll show it fully for using um, using sine so sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite all of our hypotenuse so opposite is e x my hypotenuse is 6.75 times 10 to the power of 4. You can rearrange EX is equal to put this in our calculator and we get 3.4 We can do the same thing with cos. You'll find, if you try this yourself, you'll find it should be the same, except for the y component, it works out to be using cos instead of sine. So we plug this into our calculator, and we get 5.4. 8 times 10 to the power of 4. So now we have our two, two components, our x component and our y component. So we've taken all of our vectors. This one's already in the y direction, so we don't have to do anything with that. And this, vec this vector, we've broken up into its x and y direction. So what we can do with this now is put it in an x and y table. And this is going to help us figure out the net electric field in the x direction and in the y direction. So the two that we just did here, I would have, now let's think about our signs. EY is down, right? For me to get from this point to this point, I've got to go down and over to the right. So down is going to be negative and to the right is going to be positive. I set up my coordinate system so that that's my positive y and that's my positive x. 
So EX positive, 3.4 times 10 to the power of 4. EY negative, 5.8 times 10 to the power of 4. Now, remember, in my y direction, I'm negative because I'm going down. Now all we have to do is look at our last vector. So we've taken care of this one completely. Now we've got to take care of this one up here. But we calculated the length of that to be 2.4 times 10 to the power of 5. 2.4 times 10 to the power of 5. So now all that's left to do is add them up in both my x direction. So net means the addition. This means the addition. So I only have one vector or one component in my x direction. In my y component, in my y direction, I've got two. So I've got to add these two numbers. So now I've got my total net in the x and my y direction. So I can redraw a new triangle with this being my components. And what I'm looking for is what is the hypotenuse and what is the angle. Now this question asks for both the magnitude and the direction. So we have to find both the magnitude c and the direction is theta. So to find c, now this side length, E net x, E net y. So to find the C, because this is a right angle triangle now, we could use Pythagorean theorem. So you plug in your numbers. And you solve for C. We find this to be 1.83 times 10 to the power of 5. To find my angle, I know my opposite and my adjacent, so I'm going to use tan. This is my opposite. This is my adjacent. So to find the angle, I do the tan inverse of all of this. And you're left with 79 degrees. So my final answer is the electric field is equal to 1.83 times 10 to the power of 5. Now the units for this are going to be newtons all over coulombs with the direction of east 79 degrees north. It would be pointing east and then you're going to be going towards the north. And that's all.